All right, we're getting the itch now. I just finished uh, Subbook 1, and even though I still think, by and large, it's the Subbook 1 that I've uh, been least into, it's starting to get me excited. Now, here are just some thoughts going into the rest of the book. And, and I hope it's okay in the last two. Like, I want to be totally honest where I'm at with these videos. Like, I'm not... Uh, trying to put on a show of like being overhyped like you're getting my actual reaction with with this series when it when it happens in just the last couple chapters I wasn't super excited now here's what subbook one left me feeling so far uh, I can't help but want more Haboric and I'm ready for more Haboric I don't know if I've mentioned before but I read when I read Gardens of the Moon, I thought it was kind of a cool plot, but I wasn't really connected with any of the characters. And I think it was Haboric and Duiker. And then, uh, you know, it was kind of Felicen's story, but there was something about Haboric that was so interesting to me and, and Duiker. And Haboric is low-key kind of my, has been my most, you know, the plot line, other than Troll which I was thinking that Troll was going to become like the, you know, sitting on the throne or something. You know, I, I wasn't sure where it was going, but I like Troll's story. But it's Haborix that has really, um, you know, it just keeps coming back to these flipping jade statues. And now we're seeing these jade spears in the sky, which looks like, you know, is this... Like more statues, or are we having some weird time thing because of what happened with Acarium? Like, is this happening now? And then, you know, I'm just thinking about that now. Like, is this happen the Jade statue we saw before? Anyway, maybe I'm way overthinking that, but it's just interesting. And I'm so compelled by these freaking Jade statues. And, and I want more Haboric because I'm still kind of confused what kind of state he's in. See our broken Cinderella castle back there. Um, so I really want more of that. This could become like the Haboric slash Ganos show for the rest. And I'd be like into that. I'm suspecting the last book will be like all Ganos and Whiskey Jack doing some big charge and the bridge burners, you know, the bone, it's going to be a cool convergence wherever it is. Uh, other things that I was thinking about, I, I was wondering about where some, you know, where the snake was going. Like, are they going westward? It looks like they're going from Kalance east or westward towards this glass desert, which I didn't see until I looked at a map. So it looks like they're going that way to the city. Maybe that's called Icarius. And if any city is going to be connected with Acarium, it's going to be that one, right? I don't know in what way. I don't know. Uh, Glass Desert is interesting because wasn't the... In Genebacus, that place where Talk wakes up, you know, that obsidian place. That's kind of... Kind of reminds you of something like that. Um... I'm interested in maybe a convergence around the glass desert. I don't know. The snake uh, child refugee thing suddenly kind of hit me more. I mean, it should have in the prologue, but I was like, ah, more people I don't know. Um, but it's starting to hit me that like, you know, the, the chain of dogs was so powerful by the end of that book. I mean, we're starting now with this thing that reminds you of Coltane's chain of dogs but it's literally children um how interesting that some of these things just echo each other over and over and that you know having that remind me of the chain of dogs and kind of coming back around through this is is getting me nostalgic for the older books and also kind of making me realize like even though I want to get to the end, it's like, oh, like, dang, we'll be at the end of our Book of the Fallen journey. And, uh, but, but in a good way, like, that's a cool way to maybe bring it back and realizing that we are going to get some 
um, closure with, with all this. Uh, often, you know, in the last two chapters, I was in that stage where it was like hard to appreciate the series for the sum of its parts because you just see so many parts. And when those parts come together, that's when you really start to enjoy it. But sometimes it's hard to be like, there's just so many things. Um, but I got my little spark of like, uh, this, this is, this is the conclusion coming up. So it is exciting, even though it's going to be in two books. So I am getting that interest, uh, again. Um, Tavor is an interesting character, hey? I, I, I thought she was interesting when we just heard about her, but there was something about the prologue in Dead House Gates of her looking at Felice and, and uh, you know, I didn't do videos at that time, so I can't prove it. But at that time, I was thinking like, no, there are, there's going to be more to this lady. She's not just ruthlessly, like I guessed that. Um, I guessed that she wasn't just putting Felice in there to kill her or whatever, right? Wasn't as, even though she's cold iron, she's like not a bad character or evil character or whatever you want to call it. I love the parents. Um, Tavor is interesting in this one. She wanted this reading and now she's like ticked off. She's like, screw it. Like, I, I'm kind of confused why she demanded it and why now she's, like, upset by it. Wasn't there an unaligned card in that that we still don't know really whose that is? Like, the unaligned something, House of Chains card? Isn't there another one? Wasn't that the last one? Um... Waiting to see what car... So I, I imagine we're not going to see his family anymore. Unless they, like, show up in the last battle. But I wanted to see Carsa's grandpa and whatever again. I, I'm excited to see how that wraps up with Carsa in this. Um, or in the, in the next book, probably, in all likelihood. Uh, I'm excited to see the people coming out of Dragnapur. I'm excited to see where all this goes with Hood uh, and maybe these new realms, these new Warrens and stuff. Excited to see where we get with the Tistandi in the end and the Edur and like it's so cool. And it's like, oh man, we're coming to a conclusion. Um, so I, you wonder how many of these things are going to get wrapped up and then how many are going to continue on. Um, Interested to see the bridge burners have their last hurrah, whatever that's going to be. And the bone hunters. I'm coming around to the bone hunters. Maybe not as much as the specific characters, even though like people like Dead Smell and, you know, I do think Hellion's kind of funny. I keep bragging on her, but she is a good character. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of the people I loved... Like, I love the bridge burners from Toll the Hounds that we got. And I just don't quite have that same level for the Bone Hunters yet. But I think on a reread, that's when I what that's when I will. Um interesting to see the stuff with the this Volcando. Uh I didn't mention, you know, the two dragons that went up. That was Curdle and what's her face, right? Uh, interested to see, like, Tool is running this bar gas group in a way that they don't like. Is it because he's depressed or is it, is it just that he's an eye mass? Which I don't know. Um, maybe a little bit of both, you know. It sounds like they want to go fight someone and, he, and he's not doing it. Uh, what else do I want wrapped up? Either in this book or in, you know, it's got to have a ton of Perrin. Wondering about if, if Iskar Jarek comes back in whatever way, like, does he get another shot with Corlat? If he's kind of the same person, but not. Like, you wonder how much of the same kind of person they are. Uh, 
this at the end of sub book six or sub book one, chapter six, there is they're going to this Kachain Chamal city and like Taxilian or whoever, and these people are there, and I'm not sure if they are there in the way that you know, I'm not sure about their part in the prologue. Like, are they inside of Icarium now? Because he's like a Warren of himself or something like that. And they were talking about the spear. This ghost was talking about a spear or something, you know, making... I, I didn't totally understand that, that scene. But I had mention of a spear, and I wonder if that's like Troll's spear. Like, he had this... It's so confusing how time works in this too, as I was mentioning. And if he's like the whatever of time, you know, it's just going to be so cool to go back to this once I know what the frick is happening in this series. Um, like we've got such good closure for the people in Genebacus in general, but like where's Silver Fox? Are we going to get more? I'm sure we get more Absalar. We must get more Absalar. She was the first person mentioned in chapter one, right? It's got to have her at the end, the very end. Um, stuff with Tayhole and, and Bug and all these elders. What's going to happen with uh, Crawl? Um, just so many, just so many things. So I am getting the itch again. Um, took to the end of sub book one, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Lots of things to be excited for. And I'll uh, talk to you on the next one. I, I imagine I'll just rip through to, to halfway. Talk to you later.